Copper, nitric acid, do these things react? What happens when they do? Do chemists secretly laugh at people who don't know? Who knows the answers to these questions? I do, and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is copper, this is nitric acid, and this is the reactivity series. The elements in this table are listed in decreasing reactivity. The first step in predicting whether a chemical reaction will occur is to see if a metallic reagent is more reactive than the cation in an ionic compound. In this case, our two reactants in question are copper and H plus ions. We can see that hydrogen is slightly more reactive than copper, so, based solely on general reactivity trends, we can predict that copper will not react with nitric acid. In order to test this, a length of copper wire was placed in an Erlenmeyer flask and immersed in a large excess of concentrated nitric acid. Immediately, the solution turns a greenish color and a reddish gas forms, so it would seem that our prediction was incorrect. In order to explain this, we must use a more sophisticated method of determining the favorability of a reaction. Gibbs free energy. One equation for Gibbs free energy states that it is equal to the enthalpy change of reaction, delta H, minus the product of the Kelvin temperature, T, and the entropy change of reaction, delta S. In order to calculate the entropy and enthalpy changes of reaction, we must use Hess's law, which states that the entropy and enthalpy changes of reaction are equal to the sum of the respective changes of formation of the products minus the sum of the respective changes of formation of the reactants. Using this equation and the table of values below, we find that the standard enthalpy change of reaction is negative 26.7 kilojoules per mole of reaction. Repeating this calculation with standard entropy of formation values yields an entropy change of reaction of 611 joules per kelvin mole of reaction. Using these two values, the calculated Gibbs free energy value is negative 32 kilojoules per mole of reaction. Since this value is negative, it can be said that the reaction of copper and nitric acid is thermodynamically favorable at standard conditions. In the reaction, the copper wire and nitric acid react to form a reddish-brown nitrogen dioxide gas, green aqueous copper 2 nitrate, and water. Since the enthalpy change of this reaction is also negative, it must be exothermic. This causes the pressure of the gases in the sealed Erlenmeyer flask to increase by Gay-Lussac's law, forcing the evolved gas through the tubing and into the second Erlenmeyer flask. But if you observe the bubbles in the second flask, you will see that they are colorless, not reddish-brown. This is due to a reaction between nitrogen dioxide gas and water, which forms nitric acid and oxygen. In order to verify that an acid is indeed being formed in the second flask, the acid base indicator methyl red has been added, which turns from yellow to red or pink when it is in an acidic environment. Once the reaction finishes in the sealed Erlenmeyer flask, it begins to cool, causing the pressure to decrease, which creates a suction force that pulls in water through the tube. This increase in the volume of water in the flask increases the amount of nitrogen dioxide gas that can be dissolved, causing the brown-colored gas above to seemingly vanish. As the water level rises, we see that the once green solution becomes blue. This is due to a so-called ligand exchange. When the water level is low, there is a very high concentration of nitrate ions in solution which form a green-colored complex with copper-2 ions. As the volume of water increases, the copper-2 nitrate complex breaks apart, resulting in a colorless nitrate water complex and a blue-colored copper water complex. Once the reaction ends, we are left with a solution of unreacted nitric acid, copper-2 nitrate, and dissolved NO2 gas. 